YouTube, how's it going? Welcome back to AJ's Garage. Before I start this video, I just want to say to any of the subscribers that live in California, I uh, hope you guys are staying safe and, and not affected by the wildfires. We recently had one in my area, uh, Central Valley, California, about an hour from me. I literally was just up there fishing uh, about a week and a half ago, and I did record some content on that, so I'll have that out soon. But uh, it's called the Creek Fire. Um, it's spreading like crazy and not much containment yet, so I uh, hope everyone's staying safe out there. But getting into the video, we're working on the 74 Dually today. It's been quite a while since I did anything to it. Um, with the heat and then this air quality, I just haven't got around to much. Um, and I'm still not quite sure what's going to be done, but I have a little better of, uh, of an idea now. So hope you guys enjoy this one. Thank you guys for watching. So as we left off last time with the dually here in the engine bay, I had pulled this valve cover off. We were able to see that the valves, everything looked really clean. Um, so now I do kind of want to clean up the top of the engine. I know the carburetor was rebuilt, but it's been sitting of course for a while now. So um, I'm going to pop off the valve covers, uh, give them a clean, put them back on with new valve cover gaskets. Um, and then just kind of clean up some of these vacuum lines that have some cracks in them, make sure we're not getting any leaks, um, and go from there. Here I have the driver's side valve cover. And as you guys can tell, it's definitely pretty grimy. It's been leaking, and then just from sitting over the years, it's just got a bunch of caked on grease there. So we're going to clean this one up. I'm just going to run a screwdriver over some of these areas here and knock some of it down and then we'll spray it with some engine degreaser and give it a, a decent cleanup just so it looks a little better. The passenger side one isn't as bad, but it's still just dusty. We're gonna clean that one up the same and then put new valve cover gaskets on both and put them back in the truck. Already looks 10 times better. So I got the passenger side valve cover on, um, replaced the gasket. While I was here too, I also replaced some of the vacuum lines put some new uh, vacuum plugs as well. Some of them were kind of brittle and just cracking. I did also separate these two lines, the one going from the carburetor and the distributor. They were all linked together and then there was like a, one of those connections here was going from one to the other one. So it was just jumped over, I guess. Um, but now I just need to put the driver's side valve cover off. Now, if some of you guys have replaced valve covers on these, this is my first time uh, replacing the valve cover gaskets, they have these little tabs that go into certain spots on the valve cover, which kind of keep these in place. Now, these that I ordered were from Felpro, and these don't really line up. So at first I tried cutting these a little bit extra um, just to get them to lock into place but they don't quite sit right. So what I did on this side was just completely cut these tabs off. Uh, I think that's what I'm gonna do here. If I have any issues with a slight leak, I'll probably just um, run some RTV. Again, this isn't gonna be driven a lot right now. Just trying to get it cleaned up and get it running. So once we get the valve covers on, we're gonna clean up this intake manifold. We'll probably pull the carburetor off and clean that up a little bit and uh, go through the carburetor, just make sure everything looks good, and then we'll get her fired up. Day two, and we're starting back off in the engine bay, and as you guys can tell, I did get both valve covers put back on. They cleaned up pretty nice and didn't take too much of the paint off. But as I looked around to see what I needed to do next, this fuel line just seemed kind of out of place to me. So if I can get you guys a better view down here, I know the fuel pump has been replaced. You can tell it looks pretty new, but one of those rubber fuel lines is supposed to be there, the one that goes back to the tank, but the one that comes up to the carburetor also has some rubber fuel lines, so I'm pretty sure there should be a fitting for that. I do happen to have an extra fuel line that I had ordered for my 70 F250 now. With that truck having a 351 modified from a 71, I mean, I'm 71, a 78 F250. Um, if you guys didn't watch some of my early, early videos, my truck originally came with a 360. 
when we got it, the 351 was in its place. I'm assuming the original uh, 360, you know, was done for. So they replaced it with that. So the only thing about this fuel line is because those 351Ms and the 400Ms are a little bit taller as far as, I guess, deck height or whatever you call it, this sits a little too high off of the intake manifold. So I'm gonna get it installed and see how high it is. If not, I do have a cutter, so we'll just cut a piece here and then run some rubber fuel hose just like this. That way we can get this old crusty one replaced. Well, I was wrong. So it looks like on this style fuel pump, and I'm not sure if that's true to most FEs or at least just this year, this one will take two rubber fuel hoses. So the one that's on there now goes back to the fuel selector like I mentioned. And then we will replace the hard line that was going up to the carburetor with the new one. Got the fuel line put in. It does come a little close to touching right there on the power steering bracket, but uh, it'll be okay. I'll probably just put some uh, rubber line on there just in case it rubs so it doesn't eventually um, cause any problems. But we are just about ready for takeoff. Got the distributor cap put back on. All the coil plugs um, back where they're supposed to go in the correct order. Just kind of clean them up a little bit and we're just going to place the air cleaner back on and see if we can fire this thing off. So before we get this thing fired off, I actually took about two steps backwards and then ended up putting the original fuel line back on. I just wasn't really happy with the fitment of the other one. Of course, it wasn't meant to be on this engine. But um, with this one, I ended up just kind of straightening it out and then just adding little bends to it here and there. So I'm actually a lot happier with the fitment on this one. And then I also kind of cleaned up some of the wiring here. So this one, of course, goes to the coil. Um, this wire, I believe, is the oil pressure and then the temperature, which is uh, up on there. So I am going to replace those two sensors. So I did kind of rewire this, um, added some new electrical tape and just some uh, heat shrink tubing just to keep it from coming undone. But I will eventually wrap that whole thing in electrical tape. But um, let's get this thing going. And... I already gave it a few cranks, um, so I got the oil moving, the engine lubricated. So I'm hoping that it didn't kill the battery. So let's see. That was a good sign. So now that I got the truck running again, I do just want to go over the next steps in the process for this thing. Um, we were in the engine bay, but as you guys can tell, I did start taking everything apart. I do plan on pulling this whole front off, the core support, the fenders, the fenders, the inner fenders, but um, I'm doing it in steps. If you guys have ever done this stuff before and taken these old trucks apart, especially if they've never been apart, they have these bolts and then these little clips. A lot of them are seized after such a long time and they're quite difficult to get off. So you have to kind of grab these on this side and then reach in through the fender and grab some of these. So I still need to get these off. And then of course we'll, we'll take these top ones off and there's some on the inside of the door and then this fender will come off. The, uh, Inner fenders are, are fairly simple also, but um, it just takes some time. So one thing I did find out about the truck is this was a factory AC truck. 
um, it's missing some sort of valve there. The compressor, of course, the two lines went, ran into that valve. Um, and then the condenser and that stuff that goes up here. I don't know what it is about me and these old trucks, but somehow they always get butchered up. So this core support used to come down here. And for some reason, someone chopped that all off. The AC probably wasn't working and they just wanted to get that stuff out of the way. So um, not sure exactly what I'm gonna do yet, but I have thought about replacing this core support and uh, putting the AC back in, or at least getting AC back in the truck as far as like starting to find the pieces to it. I have seen a kit that's supposed to be for these trucks from 73 through 77, I believe, and it's supposed to be a little bit of an updated version of what originally came on these trucks, so it should be more efficient. But besides finding out it was an AC truck, the truck also has been hit before, which explains the green hood, the mismatched colored fenders. So these were originally this color here, and someone just painted them white. And the damage there. So that cab mount got hit, and then the floor got hit, and I'll show you guys what that looks like. So at first I thought maybe I can replace it, but it's pretty bad. So this got pushed down, the floor there got pushed up, so did this whole section, and then you can tell the seam there is busted. And then don't mind me using it for paint storage there, but that floor pan over there is pretty rusted through. It has uh, some holes through it, so we'd have to replace that floor pan, but um, kind of thinking about replacing the cab since it is an AC truck, but the rest of the cab besides that, and then that other floor pan is in pretty good shape. So um, let me know in the comments what you guys think I should do, what you guys would like to see. Um, I've never really been a fan of the dent sides, but I'm kind of getting a little attached to it, especially with it being an AC truck. I think that's pretty cool. So we'll see, uh, we'll see what comes up next. I actually replaced the transmission pan gasket because it was leaking. And then I came out to see that. So it's not leaking from the gasket, the, uh, the shifter section that comes out from the pan or from the casing is leaking so I need to pull the pan back out from what i saw remove the valve body and then replace that fix one thing and then it's another <laughs> 